This bill is worth one billion Zimbabwean dollars. When issued in 2008, there were even bills issued with a face value of a hundred trillion Zimbabwean dollars. That's a one with 14 zeros. Unfortunately, unfortunately, they were almost worthless. At one point, over 600 million Zimbabwe dollars were equal to one U.S. dollar. Eventually, the country abandoned its own currency and allowed foreign currency to be used for purchases. Inflation is the rise of price level for the entire economy, and not just one good or service versus another. The cost of the cost or living index is measured and reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics tracks inflation rate by taking a basket of goods and services and the price of purchasing these goods and services. It then compares the changes in this price year over year. Of the eight categories used to generate the consumer price index, housing is the highest at 41%. The next highest category, transportation, at 16.8% is less than half the size of housing. Other goods and services and apparel are the lowest at 3.4% and 3.6% respectively. The US price level rose relatively little over the first half of the 20th century, as seen in this graph, but has increased more substantially in recent decades. The upward slope of the price level was especially steep in the 1970s, which reflects the high rate of inflation in that decade. Inflation during the 20th century was highest just after World Wars I and II, and during the 1970s. Deflation, that is negative inflation, when most prices are falling, occurred several times in the first half of the century and in 2009 as well. Inflation rates since the 1990s have been in the low single digits. This chart shows the annual percentage change in consumer prices compared with the previous year's consumer prices in the United States, the United Kingdom, Japan, and Germany. These economies are relatively stable with low inflation. These charts show the percentage change in consumer prices compared with the previous year's consumer prices in Argentina, Brazil, China, Nigeria, and Russia. Of these, Argentina, Brazil, and Russia all experienced hyperinflation at some point between the mid-1980s and the mid-1990s. Though not as high, China and Nigeria also had high inflation rates in the mid-90s, even though their inflation rates have come down over the last two decades. Several of these countries continue to see significant inflation rates. The next three slides show some of the impacts that inflation has on the macroeconomy. This is seen in instances like pensioners with fixed income or minimum wage earners. After adjusting for inflation, the federal minimum wage dropped more than 30% from 1967 to 2010, even though the nominal figure, not adjusted for inflation, climbed from $1.40 to $7.25 per hour. Increases in the minimum wage in between 2008 and 2010 kept the decline from being worse as it would have been if the wage had remained the same as it did from 1997 through 2007. All goods and services may not follow the general inflationary trend leading to ambiguous uh, signals in the market over price. This can cause a greater chance of a surplus if future prices are expected to fall or a shortage if a rush to buy is caused by expectations of higher prices. Over the last several decades in the United States, there have been times when rising inflation rates have been closely followed by lower productivity rates and lower inflation rates have co corresponded with uh, increasing productivity rates. As the graph shows, however, this correlation doesn't always exist. As the risk of inflation rises, businesses tend to stick to short-term planning, reacting to changes in input cost and prices for their goods and services. 
indexing means that you refer to another source to determine the direction and scale of change from. For example, a wage can be increased by the inflation rate. This is indexing the wage to the inflation rate. In practice, this type of wage indexing is called a cost of living adjustment or a COLA for short. An adjustable rate mortgage is one that has its interest rate indexed to the inflation rate. In 1972, the Social Security benefits were indexed to changes in inflation. And finally, a final example is some bonds issued by the U.S. government have had their rates indexed to inflation as well. To sum up the main causes of inflation, you could say that it is when too many dollars are chasing too few of goods and services in the economy. This will inevitably drive up the price level or cause inflation.